president and nothing matters anymore. <laughs> I don't want to spend too much time on it because this is a rare moment where we don't have to think about that, but whenever I tell someone I'm a comedian, it's always the same thing. Hey, Trump being president, that must be great for comedy. And I'm like, that's a weirdly optimistic take on looming nuclear Armageddon. <laughs> so somebody saying that Trump is good for comedy is like your doctor trying to find the upside to your cancer diagnosis. <laughs> Jordan, I'm sorry to give you the bad news, but you have stage four lung cancer. And even if we treat it with chemo, there's a good chance you won't survive. But look at the bright side. Somebody's about to save a whole bunch of money on weight loss treatments and haircuts. <laughs> I guess what I'm trying to say is that I really love my dog. <laughs> Anybody here have dogs? Yeah, good, I, I love dogs. I don't understand people who don't love dogs. If somebody, somebody who doesn't love dogs is like someone who says they're not a dessert person. How can you not be ecstatic about the living embodiment of happiness, you sad, shallow husk of a person? I hate you. <laughs> so I adopted a dog re uh, last year. He, he's a yellow lab corgi mix named Butters. Exactly, exactly. If you've never seen a corgi mix, let me describe it to you. My dog looks like he is wearing a yellow lab costume that's three sizes too small. <laughs> and I just got him a year ago and I'm still in the honeymoon phase where everything he does is adorable even if it annoys everyone else. I will frequently send my friends text messages of him doing banal things. I'm like, guys, guys, look what Butters is doing. He's just sitting there. <laughs> so majestic! <laughs> and I love, I love him. I'm, I, everything he does is cute to me, but one thing he does do that I really love is how he eats. He, uh, he sticks his head in the bowl, he's like, oh, 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 and he looks up at me approvingly, oh, oh, he goes, oh, 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 looks up at me approvingly, and I think, oh, that's so adorable. And then I wonder to myself, ladies, is that what we look like when we're going down on you? <laughs> oh my god, oh my god, I can't believe I actually get to eat this. This is the most amazing thing I've ever tasted. This is everything I've ever wanted. Now, now, I'm being good, right? Please tell me I'm good. Please tell me I'm good. So speaking of things that only happen once a year, does anybody have a birthday coming up? if any of you have relationships, that's really sad. <laughs> wow. No, you're way too excited about that. But uh, a lot, I'm not a big birthday person. A lot of people are huge, crazy birthday people. I call these people women. <laughs> because men and women, we do not treat our birthdays equally. This is how a man celebrates his birthday. Huh, according to Facebook, today is my birthday. <laughs> I guess I need to go get drunk or something. This is how every woman celebrates their birthday. It's my birthday, everybody! You all have to celebrate me! And you have to, because I'm the birthday bitch, because that's what it says on my sash. Now, I want to be clear. I wrote that joke before I found out that the birthday bitch sash is real. And this is the problem about writing jokes in the Trump era. Something that starts out as a joke is six months away from sad reality. And the birthday ritual as it is doesn't make any sense. Like, if you try to explain it to someone who had never heard of birthdays, it sounds like the insane ramblings of a Viking warlord. You know, I imagine this mythical Viking warlord who invented it was just making it up on the fly to distract his people from the hungry wolves surrounding the village. As I imagine, he introduced it to everyone. Heralds! We send a message to all four corners of my domain, telling them that we shall have a feast! to commemorate my daring escape from the maternal uterine prison. <laughs> and you shall tell all of my subjects that they must bring me tribute in the form of gifts. And inside each gift, there shall be a small piece of paper that tells you where the gift came from, so I may exchange it for what I actually want. <laughs> And then, when, at, when we are done with our feast, we will have dessert. I don't know, let's just say cake. And then, when the time is right, you shall set my dessert on fire! And I, with one mighty bellow of my breath, shall extinguish that thing. And my deepest, truest wish shall come to fruition. Unless, of course, I tell you all, my wish was. 
I don't know. Viking magic. And when this is happening, you shall all celebrate and laud me with song. All right, sir, will any song do? No! <laughs> there is only one song you may sing, and if you perform it publicly, you must pay Warner Brothers. <laughs> and this is the most important part, and we cannot bend on this at all. No two people may sing in the same key or the same tempo. <laughs> This is exactly how every feast of the day of birth shall go. Unless, of course, we go for Mexican and change our minds. Then I guess you can bring an acoustic guitar. <laughs> This is, uh, I've actually been trying to get into this show for three years, and uh, I'm actually moving to Oklahoma to pursue stand-up comedy. Similarly, I, similarly, I quit drinking, so I'm moving to New Orleans, because that makes just as much fucking sense. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I hope you all are drinking, because that will make this much more enjoyable for everyone involved. And, uh, but I don't drink anymore, but I love coffee. I love, love, love coffee. In fact, I, uh, in fact, I like my coffee like I like my women. I will take literally anything you give me. <laughs> I don't care if it's not hot anymore or if it's not from my gas station. I just want to feel alive again. I'm Jordan Parker. You guys have been great.